welcome to Share Bright Light. We just left church, had a great sermon, and today we want to talk about judging. You know, I keep hearing a lot of people say, you can't judge me, only God can judge. God is the only judge. And so today, we're going to talk about that. We're going to go get something to eat. We're going to go to Lowe's. Why don't you just come with us? It was amazing. And the waitress was awesome too. So I, I just want, we're talking about judging people and oh, don't judge me and things like that. I want to present you with a stark reality that is presented in John 3, 18. It says that he who believes in him, that is Jesus, is not condemned. But he who does not believe is already condemned. And what that really means is we are already judged. Everybody is already judged. Now look it down here. Now here on this side, we'll say, we'll say that this guy is represents someone who has been judged as receives the condemnation since it's a knife that could re represent pain. And this spoon we can say represents someone who was judged but is not condemned. They have been acquitted. They have been justified. That means just as if I'd never sinned, cleansed by the blood or given a not guilty verdict. So this reality is that at any given point in time, if someone, if perhaps someone does say to you something that would hold accountability of something they see in your life or my life that doesn't line up with something they see in the Bible, it's really irrelevant because God actually already sees everything and we're already judged. The question is, what kind of judgment are we under? Have we been acquitted of guilt? Have we been given a not guilty verdict? Have we been justified? That means just as if I'd never sinned? Or are we already condemned for the deeds in our life? So I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I trust, adhere, and rely on Jesus Christ. I'm conforming to his image. I'm trusting his work on the cross, and I'm a follower and disciple. As a believer, who am I supposed to judge? There's a verse that says, judge not, and there's a verse that says, to judge. So we're going to go to Lowe's, and we want you to come with us, and we're going to talk about this stuff. Come on. Woo! The Bible says that as believers in Jesus Christ, we are to judge those who are within the church. Those who have said, you know, I, I'm making a commitment to Jesus Christ and I'm coming under his lordship, under his word. And we're saying, we're just saying, hey, you committed yourself to follow Jesus and this is not following him. That would be a way of us examining, seeing something that doesn't line up with it and us holding them accountable, which is a very big word many people struggle with. But accountability is calling people up to who God has created them to be. And oftentimes people take offense because it's perhaps it's not perceived as done in love. We also have to get out of our feelings and recognize that if someone's calling us up, that it is actually a loving action. The Bible says that we're to love with deed and truth. We love people with truth. The book of Revelation, Jesus says those he loves, he tells them their faults, or those he loves, he chastens. So in a how-to perspective, we don't want to be one like the accuser of the brethren. We want to be like the Holy Spirit who is the helper, who, one who comes alongside and helps to pull people up. And so you know what, man? I'm seeing this in your life, man. I'm, I'm your brother in Christ, and I really want you to know that I'm here for you, but you're not living up to where God has called you. The God has called you above this. You need to take this in prayer. You need to take this seriously and challenge and encourage. And sometimes that can be painful, but are we willing to love? The Bible says faith are the wounds of a friend and we know that the kisses of the enemy are deceitful so I can personally attest to a time in my life I was living in the world I had a close friend and he told me the things I was doing was wrong because I respected him for so long I was even living in the world but I always respected him for having the guts that he cared enough about me tell me the truth because I would have gotten in trouble I would have gotten fired would have came out but he loved me enough to tell me the truth are we going to be willing to love someone enough to tell them the truth enough to hold them accountable love them enough to judge them as someone might say so come with us for the next stop we're going to talk about what about people who are in the world what is a believer supposed to do when there's so much talk about don't judge me just come with us so we 
got a latte and a frappe at this awesome new place we've never recorded at, so it's really nice. But today we're talking about judging, and at the last stop we talked about judging people who are other believers. And so now we're gonna talk about, just for a few moments, on judging those who are out in the world, who aren't believers. This specific case also applies to judging those who have a form of godliness, but deny the power. But these are also the people that might hear the words, I never knew you, where they did a lot of stuff for God, but they didn't really know God. One thing to keep in mind here is that lost people act lost and hurt people hurt others. We are called to preach the gospel and make disciples. And make disciples does not mean we're called to go and make a convert. You know, we are to lead people to Jesus, to his presence and sometimes we may not be the person that they're talking to where they actually say commit their lives to the lordship of Jesus Christ and him as their savior but we're definitely to be a light we're called to be a light and so a light is going to be in conflict with the darkness so there's definitely going to be a time where we're called to bring something into a lost person's life is against the grain of what they're used to so in these times we have to be very sensitive to the holy spirit of god because the disciples fished all day in their own strength and didn't catch anything when Jesus Jesus said cast your nest over they caught in abundance so it's super important that when we're reaching out to those people who are lost that we're not just going with what we know and what we think and what we've been taught it's extremely important that we hear the voice of Jesus and we sense his spirit and we obey that else we can very easily find ourselves in unfruitful work but oftentimes we're called to go against the grain like I said and say things that are offensive now the Bible says to judge not lest we not be judged the context of this is to not be hypocritical if I'm saying hey don't commit adultery to someone then I need to make sure that I'm not also committing adultery. We're also to be merciful when we're judging. We're also to have compassion. But the tone and how we speak to people needs to be led by the Spirit of God because some people need a hard word. It's required. Others people need a gentle word. We have to follow the Holy Spirit's leading. Now, the Bible says that the law is a schoolmaster. When we introduce God's moral law to someone, it helps them to see and understand that they are indeed a sinner against a holy God and that this God is completely just. And as a just judge, he can't just let criminals go free or would not be a just judge. So when we're talking to people and we're sharing, hey, God's commandments not to lie. You know, the Bible, we show them the law. We say, Revelation 28, 1, 8 says, all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Like I said earlier in the beginning of the video, that these people who have not put their trust in Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins, repenting and turning away from those sins, they're already condemned. They're already on their way to hell, right? So the idea is to not say, you are going to hell but the idea is to say look you're already on your way to hell because of what God's word already says about you right and so at this point it's not us condemning because it literally already says that they're condemned so we don't have to do that but we're showing them why but we're definitely to be a light we're called to be a light as we're going out as representatives of Jesus Christ we are called to the ministry of reconciliation we need to make sure that we don't come across as Satan's the, the Satan it literally means the accuser of the brethren so that's got this pointing this you you right Right? And that just puts up walls, makes people defensive. But if we come to people as the Holy Spirit, the paraclete is one who comes alongside with our hand out to pull someone up, you know, out of these places, it's going to be more received. So in simple terms, so do we judge? Yes, we judge those who are in the body of Christ. Though people who are lost, they're acting lost because they're lost. And our job is to lead them to Jesus Christ. They might receive his love, forgiveness, and washing and be made new, right? Unsaved people don't need moral reform. They don't need to just start doing all the rules. And people who are in church, some of those people are unsaved. And they don't need another list of things to think they're made righteous by the law. They literally need to be made new. They need to die with Christ. Let their old self, their old sinful self die with Jesus Christ so that they can be resurrected with new life with Jesus. And so I wanna challenge you today that if you don't know Jesus Christ, know that your sin separates you from God, a holy God. You've already been condemned. It's not like someone has to judge you or anything like that. It's already happened. Everyone has already been judged. And so it's up to us whether we come to Jesus to get a not guilty verdict, to be forgiven, to have Jesus wash us in his blood, to have a new life within us. It's up to us to go and take hold of Jesus I just invite you to do that right now. Say, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I see that I am guilty before you, already condemned before God, according to John 3, 18. And I ask you to wash me and cleanse me. Put your Holy Spirit in me, live in me and wash me and let me have that 
not guilty verdict. Let me be acquitted. Let me be justified just as if I never sinned. And if you're a believer in Christ, I want you to take courage. I want you to, as the Holy Spirit leads, hold your brothers and sisters accountable in love. It's because we love them that we hold out our hand to pull them up to who God has called them to be. The real you is the you in Jesus Christ. It is the you that is conformed to Christ. That is the real you. So I just wanna challenge you to be the real you in Jesus Christ and to truly love others. Lay down that idol of self-reputation. Lay down that idol of reputation and truly love people. Just as Jesus in Revelation talked about those whom I love, I tell them their faults. So take that and grow today as I'm calling you up to where God has created you to be. Yeah.